You'd need to have been living under a rock not to have heard of GDPR by now. But how does that affect us in our use of Notion and what does, limits does it place on us? Watch this video with the whole way to the very end and I'll t talk you through the five steps I had to go through to get fully GDPR compliant in my use of Notion. Separately from that, the five key bits of info that my data privacy officer asked for whenever he was giving me the approval to use Notion to store my students' data. Welcome to Notion for Teachers. My name's Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos every single week. It's great to have you along. And I hope you don't miss any of the other future top quality content that I'm dropping every single week. Firstly, there's always a chance, I guess, that you've not heard of what GDPR is. GDPR is a European Union data privacy law, very much mirrors what goes on in the US, but with local constraints for, for, the, for the European Union. So firstly, what is GDPR? Well, GDPR stands for the General Data Protection Regulation. It's a EU regulation dictating how everyone that stores any data, but anyone else really, has to look after and protect and use that data um, so that people's personal data remains personal and protected and not shared more than it needs to be. But what does it mean for us as teachers and how does it impact us? I'm sure that everyone has had um, inset training on it, um, but just as a very quick reminder as it's relevant to us in our use of Notion. We need to store and use only the key data that we need to be able to do our job. So we can't be storing lots and lots of information about students, maybe dates of birth. If that's not relevant for you as a classroom teacher, you shouldn't be storing it. Students' scores and tests, however, that is pretty relevant for us as teachers, so we can store that. If you get any doubt about what you need to be doing, you need to refer directly to your data privacy officer, your DPO, and they will be able to fill you in on all the details that you may be missed if you, if you missed that inset training in your school at the start of term. Now for us in our use of Notion, what does this really mean? Well, it means that if we want to be storing our students' data, anything relating to our students on Notion, we need to be absolutely sure that Notion is set up to look after that data securely. Okay, and I'll talk later about what that data is. Make sure you watch the very, very end to hear what that data is that I've been given permission to store on Notion. Now if any familiarity with data privacy and data protection, you'll know that it's not a black and white art. It's not, it's not crystal cut. And as with any risk that a school has to take, there's always going to be risk factors and mitigation factors. So this is all about how do we get our data privacy officers comfortable with the um, data privacy policies of Notion and how the, where, the, where Notion stores the data and how it stores it. As a classroom teacher, you might be into reading these policies and understanding them, but I would say that most of us aren't, I'm certainly not. So I had to go straight to my data privacy officer and answer his questions, find out what those questions were and then answer them and then provide him with the information he needed so that he felt as though any risks around data privacy were suitably mitigated both by the information, by limiting the information that we're going to store on Notion, but also by those policies that Notion has in place to make sure that they can adequately protect the information that we're going to store on the platform. So the big five steps I went through to get myself approved to use Notion for my actual work as a classroom teacher. Number one, before I even went to my data privacy officer, I wanted to get comfortable that Notion at least thought that they were GDPR compliant. So I asked them, sent them an email, got an immediate response, including a link, which I'll share with you in the description of this video. Got a link back from Notion saying, yep, we're fully GDPR compliant. Here's why, here's all the policies we have in place to protect ourselves. So that was step one, ask Notion. They got back to me, they said, yep, fully compliant, no problem there. Step two, I met with my data privacy officer. I booked an appointment, asked him to come to my classroom so I could talk him through what Notion was. So he kind of got an idea of the mega benefits of Notion. And he did ask me the question, well, can Microsoft not do all this stuff that you're asking? Uh, to get Notion for us. That's one way he tried to mitigate the risk. Why can we not use platforms that we always already use as a school? I showed him everything that Notion does, especially like the relational databases. Relational database is so powerful, not provided by any other platform that I'm aware of. I showed him all this functionality, showed him all this amazing uh, use, uh, use cases and uh, all these different functions that I'm showing you in all the other videos that I do every single week. Convinced him of the value of 
uh, approving notion and the value to me and our colleagues as teachers by using notion. So that was step two, convincing him of the value of Notion. Step three, he asked me to send him the Notion's data privacy policies, which I did. Link in the description below, you can send your data privacy officer that link to all of Notion's GDPR policies. Step four, the main area that he was really interested in, he wanted to know what data I plan to store on Notion. So again, I'll share it in the description below, what was that data that I plan to store on Notion? But really it's students' first names, it's a few t uh, scores and tests, it's a few homework scores, nothing major revealing. We're not talking about home addresses, we're not talking about dates of birth, we're not talking about mega private information. And by limiting the detail of the information that we're gonna store on there and the sensitivity of that information, that was a, helped him to mitigate the risk and get quite comfortable with me using Notion to store that data just by only going first names, so not even surnames or middle names or and not no dates of birth, anything like that. Just first names and just a few scores and homeworks and tests. Step four, what information are you gonna be storing in Notion? Step five. Step five was the five steps he came back to me with to enable me to use Notion as a teacher to store some student data. Step five, part A, only store students' first names. Step five, part B, if and when I leave the school or when the students leave the school, the data needs to be destroyed. Step five, part C, if my rule changes and I maybe want in the future to use more data or different data, which relates to the students, I need to go back to him and we, we discuss it again. So maybe next year, if I do a different role in school, I'll need to go back to him and ask him for permission to store different or in, in additional data in Notion. Step five part D, crucially, I need to confirm to him that the agreement I'd signed in Notion incorporates the UK standard con contractual terms as per their link on the data processing addendum. Again, I'll link to that data processing addendum in the description of the video. And I did not have that information to hand. I couldn't get that information out. I couldn't satisfy step D. So what I had to do was go back to Notion, email them asking for a copy of those terms. And at the time of recording, they're coming back to me with that. But what I would say is that when I email them 20 minutes later, they get back to me and say, thanks a lot for your email. I've pushed it onto the relevant team and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And that was within the last day or two. That was your five steps of step five, steps A, B, C, D and E. Uh, and I'm, I'm still just holding it at step E of, of step five in order that I can go get fully approved to use Notion to store student data. I hope that's been super useful, quite detailed in places, but necessarily so, because we, at the end of the day, we want to protect that data. We don't want to um, ruin any trust that our students will have in us to look after their data. So I hope that's been useful. You've been watching Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos every single week. Next week, we're going back into building in Notion, um, building out new databases, new views, new, um, dashboards, everything that helps us become more efficient. But I think this is an essential step. Let's get approved for the data privacy from the GDPR perspective. And then we can like open up so much more functionality with Notion. Once we can store those student first names and a few scores in there, we can open up so much more functionality and really exploit the, all the benefits that Notion has to offer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next week.